Welcome back YouTubers to another episode of Near Mint Condition Gaten. Today I'm going to show you my monthly collected edition haul. I want to start with the Lexington Comic Show that happened here a couple of weeks ago. I picked up some of these trades of Extreme X-Men for about five bucks. These covered a Chris Claremont era and the reason I picked these up is I already own the issues, but I wanted to do a custom binding of it because I seriously doubt that Marvel is ever going to put out an omnibus. I think myself and three other people are looking forward to that, and that's not enough demand. I also picked up some of the Superior Iron Man, Captain America, and just the Iron Man by Gillen run that I was missing. Those were, yeah, those were, those were a pretty good deal. Those were about $5.00. Um, this is another one that I picked up for $10 at the show that I was missing, X-Men Rise of Apocalypse. And it contains the Rise of Apocalypse storyline that was done by the wonderful um, Adam Polina. That was his name, yeah. God, that's amazing artwork. Uh, the Cyclops and Further Adventures of Cyclops and Phoenix, and it also contains the Apocalypse versus Dracula. And they also threw in Fantastic Four number 19 which is the time traveling pharaoh story so this was a must for me and at ten dollars i just couldn't pass up the other book that i bought at the show was not for me but for my brother because i already own it it is the x-war omnibus and the x-wars omnibus was only going for 30 so yeah check out your local comic book shops a lot of these are being discounted and liquidated mm, so i also made an in-stock trade order um, over here, you'll see a book I've been very, very excited to read because I've read the first book, The Apocalypse Year One, and it was quite excellent. Um, this is Year Two, and I opted out for the standard cover, not the DCB or in stock trades DCBS exclusive cover. I really, really enjoyed this series. This is one of my favorite books to have come out in the recent years. Um, it is your typical image hardcover with no, there's not a dust jacket, just your standard graphic cover. So, you know, for 50 bucks, but it in stock, it was half off. I couldn't pass up on that. And if you have not read it, you must read it because it is an excellent read. And, yep, it's Jonathan Hickman. And I believe he does what he normally does, is keep the covers in the back. And they are some great covers. And he does that with all his hardcover collections. Um, next, I picked up some damaged books. Because I wanted to see what they were like. They were 50% off. Um, this is the Deadpool Complete Collection by Daniel Way, Volume 3. And the only spot I noticed was right here. You can see like a little dent right there. So for 50% off, that wasn't that bad. There's no markings or anything on it. So uh, this was the last book I needed for my new 52 Superman run. And again, 50% off. And the only thing I noticed was this little dent right here. I'm not sure if the gloss can... Yeah, it's right there. So, not a bad deal for 50% off. And today I got in the rest of my DCBS pre-orders, uh, starting with this wonderful book, if you have not read. This is Avengers The Initiative. This is a wonderful book by Dan Slott and Nick... Oh, not Dan Slott. Yeah, Nick, Dan Slott and Christos Gage. They both did this book. And this collects, I believe it's issues one through 19 in the annual. There were 35 issues of this. This took place right after uh, Civil War. It was one of the best books to come out of that title. And wonderful Castellini artwork. But after 35 issues, they went ahead and changed the name over to Avengers Arena. Not Arena, I'm sorry. Avengers Academy, which was a phenomenal book. I was hoping one day that we might be an omnibus, but sadly, no announcement yet. So, Ultimate Collections, even though I already own the comics and the trades, I really like the thickness of the Ultimate Collections and the feel. 
So without going into the custom binding, I decided to purchase this. Uh, and then two other books that I got were the new Epic lines for the Mutants. Uh, the New Mutants and X-Factor, both Volume 1. I opted out on X-Force Volume 1 and Excalibur Volume 1 because if you've seen previous episodes, you've seen that I have a custom bound of Excalibur. And X-Force because I have the Omnibus. The only thing that's missing from that Omnibus is the X-Force Annual 1. So this is New Mutants. This is um, a book I already had the classics of. But I really like the spine look to the epic line. So I wanted to go ahead and start getting these. This, I believe, collects, yeah, Marvel graphic novel number four, which is New Mutants, really, zero. New Mutants 1 through 12, Uncanny X-Men 167, Marvel Team Up Annual 6. Oh, and I did not know that it was including the Magic miniseries and then marvel team up 100 or material from marvel team up 100 the reproduction value is really nice on these epics there's no wash down or anything so really excited to reread this now the one book if you have not read this was one of my fan like favorite books growing up as a kid and always overlooked by the uncanny x-men title and um this is x-factor and it begins with the return of Jean Grey. So, I mean, are we really talking spoilers here? Because this happened, oh my gosh, over 30 years ago, probably. So it collects Avengers 263 and Fantastic Four 289, or 286, rather. And that is the return of Phoenix, how she comes back. So by volume one, or book one, Cyclops is ready to leave Madeline Pryor and his new kid to take off and be with his girl. What a jerk. Again, if you have not read these, these are really fun mid-80s kind of style writing and drawing. First appearance of Apocalypse, of course. And it's, um, I believe, Louise Simonson's first book is in here, if I'm not mistaken. Because the title started off by Bob Layton. He started the title, but then Louise came in and took it over. And eventually her husband, Walter, came in and started drawing uh there's some issues by mark silvestri john basima so yeah oh i didn't know that it included this this is a backup story from classic x-men number eight i think yeah number eight this was written after uncanny x-men but it explains how the phoenix force took over gene's body i remember as a kid that picture right there scared the crap out of me so oh extras just like all the epics, they have extra artwork from that timeline. The hard cover, or no, that's the trade paperback cover by Paul Smith, I think, is who did that one. And then some original black and white artwork. I don't think I've ever seen that picture that Arthur Adams did of Apocalypse. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Don't judge Apocalypse by his first appearance because I think at the very beginning, he starts off as some kind of business guy. And he turn, makes his arms turn into wings so he can fly off. Um, yeah, not the coolest moment for Apocalypse. But it kind of set the mood. Alright, so that's it. That's all I got. Really small haul. I know April's going to be a big haul for me at least. Um, so join us every week. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.